Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane. This video is part of my collection series, and today we're going to be talking about the original Game Boy. The original Game Boy was released July 31st, 1989 in the North American market. I was not an early adopter. I honestly did not like the look of the DMG. I didn't like how many batteries it took or how quickly the batteries depleted. I also didn't like how the screen looked. I know, I know there's lots of things about the original system that I did not like. However, I did enjoy the games for the system. And I started enjoying them with like the Super Game Boy and then I really got into it with the Game Boy Color going back into the back catalog and picking up all sorts of games and stuff like that. And then it really took off for me when I finally got the Game Boy Advance and I was able to actually see what was going on and, and just not have to deal with different shades of green. But with all of that said, Here's my entire current Game Boy collection. So we're gonna go over my Game Boy games. And these are actually just the original Game Boy black and white games. First up, 4-in-1 Fun Pack. This game is actually a lot of fun. I don't have the manual for it, I don't think. I know every one of these is gonna be in the custom game cases because just of the form factor. I really enjoyed it. I really loved going to the cover project and being able to print these covers and have something that is intended for long-term storage. That is basically why I am not a cardboard collector, because it's not meant for long-term storage. Following up, 4-in-1 Fun Pack Volume 2. I carried these games around with me with my Game Boy Advance when I was in college and had a lot of fun with them. There's the cartridge, a little bit of fading at the top of the cartridge. Not very noticeable on camera, but in person you can notice. And here's the back. Here's one of my favorites, Alleyway. Arkanoid Alleyway Breakout. It's all the same premise. You know, you have the little thing that the blocker that knocks the ball back up against the bricks and you break the bricks. And here's the cartridge. Battle Unit Zeoth. This is a very underrated game. The, uh, the big thing is that you hold down a button to fly and it's a bit big mech like shoot 'em up side scroller. It's very, very unique. It's definitely very unique. Bomberman Game Boy, no. or GB, but it really meant Game Boy. It's one of the few games that I have that's enhanced for the Super Game Boy player. And Caesar's Palace, again, another one of those like time waster style games where you, it's, you know, there's not really a way for you to win. You can just keep playing over and over again. But I liked this game because I like Kids Casino on the NES. Castlevania Adventure. Haven't really gotten into this one that much. I definitely need to go back and play it. Castlevania, and I love Castlevania. Speaking of Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge. I have what can I say? I'm addicted to collecting Castlevania. Again, I need to go back and play this one again and just refresh on it. Dark Disney's Darkwing Duck. I was a huge, huge fan when I was a kid. I absolutely loved the cartoon series, so I had to have the game as soon as I saw it show up in the used video game store that I was working at at the time. Next up, Final Fantasy Adventure. Now this one feels a little bit heavier, so I think I've got a book in here. Yep, I do have a book in here. And it, it fits fairly well in this custom game case. 
excuse the dog flapping in the background. Oh, and I've got the map too. Uh, I'm not gonna dig all of that out though. But, you know, uh, that just goes to show you how much you can cram into one of these cases. Final Fantasy Legend. Pretty sure I don't have any of the extras with this. Nope, I do not. But I did manage to print a case for it and put it in something nice. Final Fantasy Legend 2. Probably have a little something in here. Yep, I have the world map, which let me get the glare off. There we go. And there's the cartridge. And here's the back. Next up, Final Fantasy Legend 3. Yep. I kind of went through a period where I was essentially collecting everything Final Fantasy if I could get my hands on it. And thankfully I got my hands on a lot of it. Kirby's Block Ball. Now, this is kind of another take on the Arkanoid formula or breakout or however you want to call it. But it was a Kirby game and I'm a Kirby fan, so guess what? Had to have it. Speaking of Kirby, Kirby's Dream Land. And there's the cartridge and the back. I think that was my introduction to Kirby. And then I got the NES game. And then I, after the NES game, I got this one, Kirby's Dream Land 2. And there's the back. And here it is, I think. Yeah, this is another one of my Super Nintendo, or um, Game Boy player for the Super Nintendo Enhanced Games. And lo and behold, Kirby's Pinball Land. I kind of like pinball, and I love Kirby, so when the two came together, I had to have it. Now there's a manual, and it's in pretty rough shape. I even had to tape it together. And you can see where it's torn right there. But it's in a protective case. Another one, Kirby's Star Stacker. Man, I, I definitely have a lot of Kirby games. But this manual is in really good shape. Let me show you the back. And there we go. Next, we have Action Video Monopoly by the Game Boy. And we've got the cartridge right there. And we've got Monopoly and everything on the back. And next up, we have... Sagaya, which I believe is Darius, because, I mean, you can recognize the ship. And here's the back. I think I did this one on with a bunch of the templates that were provided by the cover project. It is, I think it's the only import Game Boy game that I own. Next up, another huge time waster between classes while I was at college is Side Pocket. Uh, it's, it's a pool game. There's really not much to it other than that. I actually liked the physics of this pool game and that's why I kept it. Oh, wait, here is my other import game for the Game Boy. I forgot that I had this one. And this is Solomon's Club. It's basically Solomon's Key where you jump around and find the key and then turn around and use the key to unlock the door and that basically gets you out of the level. Pretty good platformer. I, I spent a lot of time with it. I just forgot that I had it. Next up, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue. I think this is probably the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game on the Game Boy, on the original Game Boy, because I had a lot of fun with it. I played the others, but this is the only one that I actually purchased when I was working at that used game store. Here's another fun one. This is actually really fun if you do it multiplayer. Unfortunately, it requires two copies of the game and it requires the link cable, but Trax is a good game. I, I like it. It was one of the first versus Game Boy games that I played. Uh, unfortunately, no one that I know still has a copy of it. And finally, last but not least, Yoshi's Cookie. This is Yoshi's Cookie. It's basically the same game that is on the NES. Although it's been watered down a little bit to be able to fit on a Game Boy cartridge. But in, 
and all in all, it's a good game. You'll notice that I don't have Tetris, and it's because that version of Tetris that I have will be showing up in a later video. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.